Papua New Guinea and welcome to another episode of Business PNG. As one of the most dispersed regions in the world, the Pacific faces unique challenges in providing affordable and accessible electricity. With a heavy reliance on diesel fuel generators in many areas to power homes and businesses, electricity prices in the region are among the highest in the world, with some countries spending as much as 25% of gross domestic product on fuel imports leaving household incomes, inflation levels and national finances all highly vulnerable to volatile Asia-Pacific oil markets. A recent World Bank Praxis discussion deliberated on this critical topic. Well firstly, I thought I'd uh, ask you to paint us a picture. And Matthew, if I could start with you. In your role at the Australian National University, you, your research uh, has been um, drawn on widely um, in terms of renewable energy in the Pacific. Can you just give us a description of what energy is being used and where exactly? Well, I guess overall the Pacific um, remains very reliant on fossil fuels. So most Pacific Island countries rely almost exclusively uh, on diesel generators, uh, on um, oil-fired generation for their electricity supply. Uh, there are some exceptions, uh, Fiji for example, uh, Samoa, uh, PNG, uh, but certainly for, for most of the Pacific um, that statement is true. The issue in the Pacific is that um, these countries uh, don't produce um, fossil fuels. As a result, all fossil fuels are imported in the region. Uh, fossil fuel uh, power generation tends to be expensive and of course it exposes uh, Pacific Island countries to oil price volatility. And Cam, as we've seen, energy access rates are quite low relative to the rest of the world. Now, why is this and how can renewable energy be the answer to this? I think uh, in the Pacific, uh, one of the reasons why energy access is so low is because of the weak capacity in the government, both in terms of planning and implementation of programs. The other reason is that the Pacific Islands are generally dispersed small island islands in small load centers. The economies of scale do not exist, so it's very difficult to get out there and get energy available to the communities uh, in the Pacific. As an example, I mean, the land mass in the Pacific is about the size of New Zealand and that's spread over 15 percent of the world's total area. So it is quite a challenge to get energy out there. And finally, I think the main challenge for the governments is that they need access to finance. And I think taking all that into account and the type of solutions that can work for these remote dispersed uh, communities is renewable energy. And I think there is a lot of opportunity for renewable energy to be deployed in these smaller load centers and to increase access levels for these uh, communities. Andrew, uh, you're from one of the Pacific's largest bodies representing energy suppliers in the region. Is there a push among the, the utility companies to, to um, develop renewable energy and why <laughs> is there this push? The, um, Pacific Island utilities uh, that are members of the uh, my organisation are um, eighty percent owned by the by the national governments. Uh, the national governments have um, recognised the need to uh, um, accelerate the um, the integration of renewable energy and increase the capacity in uh, renewable energy, um, mostly. Um, for um, purposes of um, uh, lessening the, the impacts of uh, fuel price fluctuations uh, impacting on the islands. Uh, there is a lot of push now within the Pacific Island countries to, uh, to do so and, and um, it's, it's one of the reasons why the Pacific have engaged uh, um, uh, development partners and other organizations in in, in uh, developing renewable energy uh, programs uh, for the Pacific Island countries, uh, mainly to, to be able to uh, uh, lessen the impact of fuel, fuel price fluctuations. And uh, the, the climate change, um, um, climate change uh, benefits are, uh, and the actions that the governments are taking are as, as a symbolic uh, 
just from the, from the Pacific Island countries in, in, in being able to do um, something, although they do not emit, em, emit the uh, high levels of uh, climate uh, greenhouse gas emissions, but being able to, to say we are impacted by these uh, climate change uh, changes, and although we are not uh, emitting that uh, much, we, this is what we can do in terms of uh, um, renewable energy, and, and renewable energy does that for the Pacific Island countries. So that's interesting because I think many of us would associate renewable energy sources as a way to address climate change issues, but in, in the case of Pacific Island nations, it's, it's more a necessity. So you're saying that there's a focus on renew renewables to avoid uh, price hikes and price volatility. Yes, uh, and then based on experience and, and, and the, the the, the events of 2008 in some of the Pacific Island countries where they've had to declare a state of emergencies because they do not have the resources to be able to buy fuel um, for um, diesel generation just simply because of the fact that price was uh, no longer um, affordable. Uh, so it's more to, to be able to uh, have um, uh, that uh, in place rather than the, the climate change issues. Mm. So more stability and sustainable access to power. Yes. Okay, Paul, if I could now turn to you. You're an independent power producer in the Pacific. Uh, can you first tell us uh, what, what sort of, um, uh, I guess, uh, what structures do you have in place in the Pacific and why you entered it? Uh, Oscar, um, I do have um, I am an independent power producer. We don't actually have any facilities operating in the Pacific at the moment. Uh, some of the key barriers for IPPs, independent power producers in the Pacific, are that um, renewable projects are typically highly capital intensive and um, there's a lot of fluctuation associated with the, with the price of diesel, so what they're competing against. Um, so to get the certainty for an investor to come into the Pacific, they really need, we, we've all heard the term feed-in tariffs or, or some stability associated with and certainty associated with the price that they will achieve for the energy that they export to the grid. Um, they also need uh, some certainty on being able to dispatch the energy that is generated by the device whether it's solar or wind or other renewable energy sources such as biomass into the network. With small networks, quite often there are constraints on generation when the load and the generation are out of balance. So there are, there are key things, key, key risks associated with um, for an IPP that make it, um, that can be overcome, and, but the structures are quite often not there to, to enable that high capital investment in renewable energy systems. And we'll the... take a, a closer look at the obstacles and the solutions, but uh, before we do, uh, have those obstacles prevented you from entering the market? Uh, absolutely, yes. After the break, a brand new edition of Entrepreneur Engage. Stay with us. Welcome back. Amongst the challenges of doing business in the country, there are some striving entrepreneurs who aim to succeed and propel their business from strength to strength. In this Entrepreneur Engage segment, we speak to PNG JobSeek, an online job directory for the Papua New Guinean job market. Business PNG visited their office in downtown Port Moresby to hear their story. Hi, I'm Leka Frank. I am the country lead. Hi, I'm Richard Banner. I'm the marketing manager. Hi, I'm Justine Mills. I'm a director, and we're from PNG JobSeek. PNG JobSeek. PNG JobSeek. Job Let the job find you. Well, how I um, went about setting up PNG JobSeek. Well, I've been in recruitment 25 years. Worked in recruitment in PNG for. Uh, about eight years and saw that there was a gap in the market for an internet job board here in Papua New Guinea. Um, and in particular, an internet job board that was linked to mobile phones. 
everyone in Papua New Guinea's got a mobile phone, so I, I thought about trying to set up a job board that would permit job seekers to be able to search and apply for jobs anywhere, anytime using their mobile. At PNG Job Seek, we've got, we've got six staff at the moment, and pretty much we're a very small business, so everyone pretty much has to do everything. We've got um, myself, who wears every hat. <laughs> I've got Richard, who's a marketing manager, Lekka's country lead. We've got admin staff, we've got a marketing coordinator, we've also got contractors that we, we use when we need. Uh, very simple. Uh, a company can come on board and start advertising jobs on our online job board. Uh, firstly, um, a company can uh, register online by themselves or if not, they can call us and we simply register them on their behalf to uh, advertise jobs. They go on to buying uh, subscriptions or a single advert and then um, they can simply post the job. How we go about advertising a PNG job seek to make it known to the general public about our operations is uh, simply word of mouth uh, mm -hmm. through campaigns at bigger shopping malls, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as well as uh, going out to um, stationary institutions, telling students who are being trained ready for employment on how to c come and register as a job seeker and upload your CV and start applying and searching for jobs via mm -hmm. mobile phones because our online job board is uh, linked to the mobile network so make it easy for them to search and apply for mobile phones. Mm. And also success stories. A, a happy employers spread the word about how great PNG Job Seek is. So the more successful and the greater results that our employers get, the more employers we have using our job board. How long a placement takes? Well, it varies from, from position to position, employer to employer. For example, if it's a position that there is a large talent pool who will link to the job board, for example, an admin position, straight away that position could almost be placed in the day because a, 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 if an administration job is listed on the job board straight away, they'll probably have 80 applicants who will apply very promptly to that job. If it's a job for an environmental scientist, for example, there, there are only so many environmental, environmental scientists who are currently linked to our job board, so the, number, the talent pool who would apply for that, the numbers would be down. Well, some of the challenges that, that PNG Job Seek faces at the moment is probably that we have, we charge to advertise on our job board because we have significant recruitment tools that are built into our job board that separate from all other job boards. Um, other job boards operating in Papua New Guinea are free and they, they operate largely as the same, same medium as a newspaper. Our job board's different in that applicants can apply directly to our job board. They can send their CV into our job board. Uh, employers can then go into their, their account and actually application track so they can approve and reject candidates via via their account in our job board. They can send SMSs out to and emails out to candidates who are in the job board. They can do, it permits them to, to operate the whole recruitment program paperlessly. And our cost base is, um, for our costs to advertise on our job board, you can have five ads on PNG Job Seat compared to one quarter page ad in the newspaper. The biggest expenses we run as a small business in Papua New Guinea is that the same that every small business opera has. Salaries, rent, marketing. They're our greatest cost um, problems that we face, and it's the same as every business. Um, and again, the only way that we can face that and to continue is for us to be more successful and have more money coming in. Are we thinking of expanding? Well, the thing is for, for PNG Job Seek at the moment, we're internet job board. So we can reach, we reach every single province in Papua New Guinea. We have um, candidates who are applying to us for, for applying to jobs on our job board from all over the world. We have an Android and we have an iPhone app so we have even applicants that are coming in from whether it be Asia, whether it be any part in, in Australasia. So from the point of view of expanding, it will just be our sites and we've actually set up a new office at Pacific Place. We've got also an office in Brisbane. With PNG Job Seek, like, we ensure that we try to get the companies to we talk about the talk, uh, cost effectiveness of the job board and with some of the um, um, jobs, jobs being advertised, there may be some um, it's especially with the skill set, like technical roles, um, we need to go out to the papers. We need to. So what happens is we advise the um, the employers to to ha at least have some jobs advertised and referring the 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 job seekers to to the job board. Um, and that's when 
um, that's what we did for Holiday Inn Express when we first launched. We got them to advertise in the job board uh, on the papers and referred the job seekers to the job board and we got so many hits for that. I would like to encourage employers to start using the job board because it's very cost effective. You can use it as it becomes the social media side of um, advertising. Um, you can have that reach, like if, especially for employers who are wishing to, especially for government departments who are using the paper, they can have um, a wider reach if they use both print and the online job board. comes from two Motu words, um, one of which is uh, loloa, which means hill, and ta, which is the counting word for one in Motu, so it means one hill, literally one hill. Closer to Moresby is Lolorua, which is an island with two hills. Sometimes toyed with the idea of uh, promoting it as the best, uh, best capital city diving in the world. They were making a comparison about their different career paths. Like yeah. Dietrich went off and joined the Americans, and uh, Lenny Riefenstahl stayed with uh, in Germany and uh, I shouldn't say took up with Hitler, though some people will say she did. Um, but she certainly uh, worked under that regime. They both had similar careers building up to that point and that's where she got into photography. Then she did the, the Olympiad for Hitler. And then in later life she was, a, she was recovering her image again and became a you know, very famous photographer, cultural photographer. But are, are you interested in uh, art expression from that period in, in particular? No, I've had the good Good benefit as far as I'm concerned, some people wouldn't agree. Um, but she came to PNG many times diving. The first time she came out here diving, she was 96. She only learnt to dive when she was 75. And uh, so she came out here and she was underwater filming with a very specialised uh, camera. So she was here in Kimby Bay, or Kimby Bay and here. And uh, then she came back when she was 98 and filmed again and uh, and then I Max and I had the benefit of going over and visiting her in uh, in uh, Munich
leading up to independence, then uh, the Australian Airlines used to used to fly up here and do tours around the country. Uh, Fokker F 27s and ANSET and TAA used to send one or two flights each a week around the country, and they'd stop off in different locations. You know. But then it all once I think once the department was canned in 1981 under the Samari government action. The reason why? Well, the attitude was we don't want, literally, we don't want people coming here to gawk at us. So there was this idea that you were the subject of people just looking at you and they certain people didn't feel comfortable about that. I don't think there was any consultation to the beneficiaries who would have been the local people who were collecting money for being the uh, the subjects, you know. I remember one of them being the cane swallowers, I can't remember the name of the village, but somewhere out of Garoka that they used to fly people into. Or that, um, that habit or that cultural aspect reappeared only I think two years ago in the Garoka show again, but they've been forgotten for the last 40 years. So, if you put the mic, then it's going to be radio silence. Well, I feel as though we're missing out a lot along the way. There's um, great potential here that we could uh, do something with. And you're right, um, there's very few countries that are as spectacular as what PNG is. Um, not only under the water, but also the terrestrial stuff as well. Very high mountain range, uh, tropical uh, rainforests, uh, good bird life, ex extraordinary bird life. It's very interesting marsupials. Um, you know, it's got, and you know, lots of ocean, lots of islands. It's got an awful lot going for it, and pretty much under ex exploited, yeah. If you really want to stimulate agriculture, then develop a tourist industry. You just imagine what happens in, in a country like Fiji, where you've got seven or eight hundred thousand tourists a year. You've got a population of eight hundred thousand, so you've got one tourist for every person, basically. And just imagine how much food those people have to eat. And, uh, you know, basically Fiji produces all that food itself. How many people are involved in producing the food for feed 800,000 people? It's hundreds of thousands of people. And they all earn good money for it. And of course, it's not only agriculture. If you've got 800,000 people there, imagine how many <coughs> buses and taxis and hire cars and I things know. like that that you need. You know, it's all these add on things that, that drive a whole economy behind tourism. And uh, and then, then, of course, you've got um, the direct employment in the hotels and, and, and um, dive boats and whatever else it is. So we don't even think about employment, you know. We've got so few people employed in the country. Hardly anyone, you know. 400,000 out of a population of 9 million or something like that. It's nothing. The country is so much more spectacular, you know get our head around developing that industry here. We, you know, so much more perspective, there's so much more culture here. The country is so much more spectacular, you know, the reefs are so much more brilliant and, uh, and better developed, you know. Just about every aspect of it is better in PNG than Fiji.
that's all from us tonight. For more business news or if you would like to view this episode again, visit MTV online at the URL at the bottom of the screen. Or for up-to-the-minute business news and updates, like our page on Facebook or follow us on Twitter at BusinessPNG or on Tumblr. Until next week, have a pleasant evening. I'm Michelle Bird and this was Business PNG.